Hi there. It's June the 29th and we're continuing our progress through the book of 2 Kings, which in the Hebrew structure of the scriptures is part of the former prophets, the Nevi'im Rishonim. And we've come to chapters 15 and 16. Chapters 15 and 16 really mark the continuing decline towards the time of, being, of Israel and Judah being overwhelmed and then taken away by the surrounding empires. Chapter 15 opens with, in Israel, the reign of Jeroboam II, and in Judah, a new king comes to the throne. This is King Azariah, and Azariah has quite a long reign, uh, over 50 years, but uh, he's a leper, and therefore he lives apart in a house um, because, he, because he has leprosy and he's not allowed to be uh, with the people. So it's a strange situation that he's in. But during the reign of Azariah, this long reign, um, the Jeroboam II is succeeded by Zechariah. Now Zechariah is the great-grandson of King Yehu, and the prophecy uh, was that the sons of Yehu would reign on the throne uh, until the fourth generation. And this is uh, brought to an end, his, his dynasty is brought to an end by the murder of Zechariah by Shalom uh, ben Yavesh. And Shalom ben Yavesh just is one of the captains and he kills Zechariah. And this marks a decline in, in Israel uh, because one by one the kings are, there's challenges to the kings or to some of the kings. There are the overthrow of kings, the regicide is something that becomes common. So Shalom, actually, who's taken over, who's killed and taken over, he only reigns one, one month and he is murdered by Menachem ben Gadi. And Menachem ben Gadi becomes king and he reigns for ten years. He attacks Syria and uh, he's a very, he seems to be a very violent king. He's known for the fact that he destroys pregnant women and he's, he's not a pleasant character at all. Menachem uh, it goes the ways of Jeroboam, that is, he maintains the altars at Dan and Bethel, the ones that keep people from worshipping in Jerusalem, and he also raises a tax to stop the attacks uh, of, of Pul of Assyria. Pul of Assyria is on the rampage. Assyria is the empire that is growing, but to placate and to, um, uh, and to show uh, honour to Assyria, um, Menachem raises a tax and sends it to Paul of Assyria. Then Menachem dies and his son Pekahiah reigns in Israel, but he only reigns for two years and he's killed by one of his generals, Pekah. So we've got this continuing pattern in Israel of regicide, of kings being killed uh, by captains, this violent overthrow. Uh, Pekah reigns for 20 years, but during his reign, um, Assyria begins now to move out of their, um, the, the, their, their own empire, and they're expanding their empire. And so the emperor Tiglath-Pileser, he begins to take Israelite cities, particularly in the north, in the Galilee, in Naphtali, and in the east, takes Gilad. Uh, Pekah is actually himself, in his turn, killed by Hoshea ben Elah, and Hoshea reigns in, in his stead. Now, after the long reign of Azariah, the leper, uh, his son Yotam ben Uzziah comes to the throne in Judah. And in this time, Israel and Syria actually ally together to begin to attack Judah uh, in the reign of Azariah. And then also, uh, uh, sorry, in the reign of, yeah, in the reign of Azariah, and then also in the reign of his son Yotam. And Yotam reigns, and uh, it's at this time that the, the alliance between Israel and Syria grows very strong. Uh, Yotam is succeeded by his son Ahaz in Judah, but at this point things go very wrong. Where these kings of Judah have tended to keep with the, the ways of the Lord and following the ways of the Lord, apart from the fact that they allow still sacrifices on the high places, Ahaz begins to... Um, act in idolatrous ways. He goes the ways of Israel, he has idol worship allowed, he has child sacrifice allowed, and during this time Jerusalem is besieged by the forces of Syria and Israel to the north. It doesn't fall, and actually Ahaz invites Tiglath-Pileser, the Assyrian Empire, to aid him and assist him in his battles against uh, Syria and Israel. And so Tiglath-Pileser comes and takes uh, Damascus, the Syrian capital, and has the king of Syria, Rezin, killed 
uh, and he takes over. Now at this point, Ahaz goes to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, forming a kind of alliance with him. He takes he, he gives Tiglath Pileser the silver and gold from the temple. Uh, he's really trying to protect himself. Also, we have this amazing thing at the end of chapter 16, where um, Ahaz sees a, 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 an altar in Damascus that he likes, and so he has a copy of this altar made, and he has it placed in the temple. In fact, it replaces the bronze altar of the Lord in the temple, and he uses it to burn his own incense, to burn, have incense burned and burnt offerings burned. Things have completely departed from anything like the ways that the Lord had commanded to Moses in the days of old. Not only that, but he takes the bronze from the temple. He takes the bronze uh, carts and he takes the bronze oxen, which are around the base of the, the wash basin, and a huge tank of water, and he has them melted down. He places that with stone. So things are really uh, going from bad to worse. And uh, he, he's, he's supporting Tiglad Pileser. He does everything he, do he does to try and fend off the attacks of Assyria. But as we'll see, things are just declining constantly. You know, this issue of idols is a huge one, even for us in our own lives. We may not have altars made and set up in the place of the worship of the Lord, but we're so often putting things in his place, things that interfere, things that get in the way. And as we can see from this decline, particularly the actions of Ahaz, we need to let nothing come into that house of the Lord, into which is the house of the Lord, which is our lives, which would interfere with the pure connection that we have with his majesty and his wonder. Have a very good June 29th.